in Wali, everybody. <laughs> Actually, it means good afternoon in a local language in Guinea. Uh, it's Susu. <laughs> so, good afternoon. My name is Jameli Nova Kobito. I work for African Enda as the regional director in charge of the West and the Central Africa region. Actually, I'm responsible for our pipeline of projects, engagement and projects in West and Central Africa. Uh, I would like to thank the Mujalu Foundation team for the invitation. And first of all, before starting, let me recognize uh, the presence in this room of uh, Mr. Alpha Diallo, who is the DG in charge of operation for the Central Bank of Guinea. So I'm pleased to share our ongoing experience in Guinea relating to the deployment of a proof of concept on Mojaloop in partnership with the Mojaloop Foundation. So the journey began exactly a year ago when uh, a gentleman named John, John Mutioa, a colleague of mine, who is he's in this home, technical payment system at Africa Nanda. He met another guy, Dr. Himi Toure, he is technical ad advisor to the prime minister in charge of digitalization. So together, they found out that Mojalu can help uh, to find some solution in Guinea in terms of, of tackling financial inc uh, inclusion challenges. So they uh, discussed about the possibility to implement uh, a Mojalu platform in Guinea. So why am I saying that? I think Mojalu companies are also a good platform to promote networking, to promote partnership, to promote new initiatives. So one year later, where are we? The project was launched precisely in September. You can see uh, the picture on the screen. So the kickoff, it was actually the kickoff event led by the chief of staff of the prime minister. So you can see my colleagues, Wale, John, and I uh, on, uh, on, the, on the picture. So we have also recruited two system integrators. We, I will give the floor uh, shortly to Min, who will represent Tisawa. So Tisawa has been recruited and will be working as an international system integrator with uh, Technoline, a local SI that have, been, that have been recruited for the project. Before that, we conducted a diagnostic. So it was a kind of market readiness assessment we made to make sure that before, you can stay on, on the slide, please. To make sure that the conditions are met to develop this project. And while the project is uh, being implemented, we are now exploring with uh, the Bojalu Foundation, the possibility to develop an accelerator program that will help build local expertise in, um, in Guinea. Next slide, sorry. So let me talk about uh, the Guinea context. So for those who don't know, Guinea is a Francophone country based in, um, located in, the, in West Africa, so West Africa region. Um, de facto, they cannot leverage uh, regional infrastructure put in place by BCR. You know, actually we have about eight Francophone countries in West Africa and seven are part of uh, what we call WIMU. WIMU is the West Africa, West uh, Africa Economic and Monetary Union. So there are some infrastructure already put in place by BCAO, but Guinea is not part of WIMU and Guinea cannot leverage this infrastructure. You can see uh, some key indicators of Guinea uh, on the screen. What we can say basically is that the financial ecosystem is what we observe in most of the countries in Africa. And uh, we can see, uh, a, I would say, a predominance of MNOs leading the mobile money industry. And we can also see that we have some MFIs, some banks that are still struggling to provide financial services leveraging digital channels. 
So the financial rate, inclusion rate is 30%. So I can say it's low. It's even driven by mobile money players. And that's why uh, the new government in Guinea uh, gave priority to projects that can help increase financial inclusion in country. So BCIG is the central bank of Guinea. They are at the heart of the fight against financial exclusion in Guinea, and they have developed their national financial inclusion strategy. So um, you can see on the screen the six pillars of this national financial inclusion strategy. What is interesting is that the project we are developing in Guinea uh, is currently addressing four of these six uh, key pillars. So we are working to make the financial ecosystem stronger. We are also working to enhance the regulatory environment. We, through this project, we aim to strengthen the payment infrastructure. And we think that ultimately, we should normally increase access to financial services in country. Next slide. So what do we want to do? achieve exactly through this POC. First, we want to test interoperability in Guinea. So interoperability between DFSPs, and we want to demonstrate via this testing that uh, it's possible, but also regardless of the type of account, the type of DFSPs, uh, end users can transact. But it's also important to us to, to demonstrate that we can do it in a short time, and at a low cost. The second objective of uh, our POC is that we want to seize this opportunity to build local tech companies' capacities. So that's what we are already doing uh, with uh, TISA Ross, uh, full skill transfer to Technoline, a local asset that has been uh, recruited for, for the project. But we also hope that we will leverage the accelerator program with um, the Mojalu Foundation to embark more local exercise in terms of knowledge sharing. And I would say last but not the least, we want to learn from this experience so that we can scale up through integration of more use cases. Uh, we want to integrate more use cases like payment, pay, pay, uh, digital uh, merchant payment and government payment. And also we want to integrate more, more DFSPs. So I will give you a brief overview on the next slide, please. Next slide. I will give you a brief overview of um, the process structure. So what we want to do, actually, we, we want through this POC to leverage Mojalo platform hosted in the cloud. We chose uh, for this POC not to focus on too many use cases. We chose to focus on P2P for this phase. So we want to make sure that transfer transaction will be possible, account to account, account to wallet, wallet to wallet, wallet to account and vice versa. And uh, in the project, we are also, we are planning to onboard four to six DFSPs coming from the microfinance sector, but also commercial banks and uh, mobile money operators. So we have established a project implementation unit to make sure that we are all aligned on this project, on the project outcome. So we have in this PIU uh, key, uh, I would say public stakeholders, so Central Bank for Guinea, but also the Prime Minister office. We have the two SIs uh, I have talked about, so TISAROS and uh, Technoline, and we also have Africananda and the Mojalu foundation supporting this POC. The project has uh, started in September. We should have closed by, uh, I would say, February. So the project should last about five to six months. And after that, we can now decide to extend the project to more use cases, as I say, and integrate on board more D DFSPs. So I would now, I would like now to hand over to Min, where is, okay. So Min will give you, will give us um, the technical overview of this project, and we can. He will also talk about what we have already achieved, what are the 
the key achievements, but also what will be the next test for this project. So you have the floor. Thank you, uh, thank you Gemolino. <clears throat> Uh, the regular attenders of Mojalu Foundation probably knows me. My name is Min. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer of the SAW Work. Um, at this point, um, I should say some things because in the last PI in Kigali, uh, people recognized me as having the loudest voice, uh, the most commanding voice, if you will. But in this in this particular convening, I shall have to concede that title to Gemolino. So, congratulations. <laughs> Um, I would like to uh, thank uh, Mojalu Foundation as well as all the uh, central bank officials that are uh, participating in this, as well as other potential SIs, existing SIs, and most importantly, uh, Simeon, Desire, Megan, who make this event happen flawlessly. Thank you so much. So uh, let me move to the, the technical overview. Uh, so again, uh, this technical overview for the very technical people will look at it and think that this is an oversimplification. And for people like me who understand nothing about technology, will look at this and get confused. So we try to find a middle ground to present the ideas. So apologies to both sides, but I'll try to go through that. So the idea is from the payer, uh, <clears throat> from working with one DFSB that could potentially be a mobile wallet or an MFI to be able to pay to a client of a different DFSP. In order to create that interoperability, Moja Loop sits in the middle. Uh, there's WSO2, which is API gateways that allow the DFSP core banking system or the mobile wallet system to be able to connect to the uh, Moja Loop platform. The alias Oracle uh, synchronizes what alias all the DFSP will use in order to participate in this program. And the most important, of course, uh, in the payment with regard to finality, we have the central ledger involved. So far for the POC itself, what we have a, uh, what we have uh, set up is the Moja Loop Core, the alias Oracle system. And at the next step, we will be onboarding DFSP as well. So the, one of the main reasons that DFSP onboarding is coming at a later stage is because we're working with a local uh, system, oper uh, system integrator called TechnoLine. And our team is spending considerable amount of time to transfer the knowledge from what we have uh, learned through our own um, Mojalu implementation in various different uh, jurisdictions to the local team. The local team would then be able to uh, um, catch up and then we will be working together with the local SI team to start onboarding the DFSP. That way the, the knowledge transfer we hope will be more comprehensive and um, sustainable in that sense. Uh, so there are a few other uh, uh, parts that we have included. So if you, uh, sorry, just, so uh, currently for the POC itself, we have established a Moja loop and we will be onboarding DFSP on a, what we would call a sandbox environment. The next stage, uh, if there, uh, once the next stage goes through, what we will be deploying is the the settlement institution into uh, connectivity to this uh, the settlement institution. A lot of that will be facilitated by the finance portal, and also participating the FSB will be start uh, will be able to view all their transaction reconciliation everything through uh, what we call the DFSB portal. So the. Uh, <clears throat> On the, on the left side, on your left side, that's mostly what the POC, uh, the settlement and the DFSB portal that will probably come on the next stage. Next slide, please. So this is just a, a quick progress on where we are. And we put this slide here to uh, potentially be able for, uh, potentially to be used in other POC as well, the approach that we have taken and the different milestones that we are going through so it can be replicated. So the first is about uh, the training needs assessment. So we spend a fair bit of time understanding local SIs, what their capabilities are and identify the gaps and uh, start filling in those gaps so that uh, the technical skill transfer is more comprehensive. So that is ongoing. Uh, the second stage is designing and development of alias Oracle. So in this particular POC, we have some, we made some assumptions uh, what that uh, alias Oracle will be. Uh, and we would like to present it to the key stakeholders, including the, uh, the Central Bank of Guinea, as well as uh, other players, and see if this is something that would fit. 
Uh, right now, we are doing a temporary alias point, but we will continue to uh, customize it uh, the way that it will really fit the needs of the, the end users in, in Guinea. Uh, the setup of operational modules, again, it is ongoing, but it's nearly completion. This allowed for us to start onboarding the DFSP, so the first stage process, uh, the first deployment phase is going forward. Uh, development and configuration, again, we make some assumptions and we have gone through that. And those assumptions will need to be tested. And in the actual implementation, this POC also serves as a way to what I will call uncover unknown unknowns, right? So we work with the known unknowns, we work with the known knowns, but sometimes it's also very important to uncover the unknown unknowns. And we need to have a platform to do that. And so we make certain assumptions to do that and we develop it and start getting feedback on top of that. Uh, so this is the next stage. So once the uh, as the the core is ready implemented, we will start uh, onboarding the the MNOs uh, and MFIs to use uh, to fit for purpose uh, the uh, POC use cases. Once that is done, we would hope that you know we can work together with the Africa Nanda team, uh, as well as all the key stakeholders in Guinea, including the the Prime Minister Office and the Central Bank of Guinea, to have their uh, input blessing and be able to start uh, uh, putting it, uh, uh, scaling it up a bit more. Uh, in terms of the process, again, this is our version. Uh, of course, you know, every POC might be different and you'll, you can try to modify that, but we started with the uh, core connector configuration, onboarding settlement, and we're gonna start testing as well once the approval is uh, in place. There's a level of customization and maintenance that still need to take place from the POC once it transition into a bigger project. And then of course, final demo. Uh, one thing that we also uh, are doing in the POC, not just this POC, but other POC, is to make sure that all the steps are fully documented. Uh, and all those documentation, we will be working with the Africa Nanda team as well as the local SI so that it becomes available to any of the SI that will potentially come on board at a later stage. Uh, so this our work will be uh, leading this process, but at the later stage, other DFS, uh, sorry, other SI might be engaging as well. And we wanna make sure that there's a continuity. So putting together a completion report, uh, that's something that we will be delivering in all the POC that we engage as well. Um, yep, that's it. Thank you so much. Any questions? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so there are some challenges and lessons that we are putting in place, but at a laser stage, after all the POC discussion are take place, uh, Oliver Menzi from Moja Loop will be uh, hosting a panel discussion for to uh, to consolidate all the lesson learned from all the uh, lessons and uh, challenges of implementing POC. Thank you so much.